Okay, welcome to the segment on the ES10 display. And what we're going to do is we're going to give an overall brief on the front of this and take a look at some of the features of the ES10. This, of course, is a three-axis display for the mill. So on the front of this, you can see that we have our X, Y, and our Z axis. We have, to the right of that, we have three keys, X, Y, and Z, that look the same except for the zero uh, to the right of it. And that's simply to clear out those three axes. So we can clear those axes. Let's go ahead and do that at this point. Now to the right of that we have the calculator keyboard. You can see that right now we have displayed in the window ABS, which means absolute. So we've got our absolute 00, zero coordinate system right now. Let's go ahead and use a calculator feature. We'll push the cal button to get into calculator mode. And you can see that now it displays a zero point or a zero uh, figure in the, in the window there. So let's go ahead and perform a calculator function. 78 times 3 equals, and we have our answer here. Now to get back to the absolute incremental mode, simply hit calculator, and we go back to ABS or absolute. Okay, so now we've looked at the upper half of the display. Let's go ahead and run over the function keys here. Um, from left to right, first of all, we have absolute. We can switch between absolute and incremental. And you can see, of course, the difference here on the display. If we go over to our mill and we've zeroed out, you can see on the display all three axes are zero. Then right here underneath my work point or my drill, that's my zero, zero reference point for absolute. So if I bring my x-axis over a bit, let's just go straight to one inch over. Okay, so at this point, I've moved to the right of my absolute zero, zero point, approximately one inch. But let's just say from that point there that I want to incrementally drill another hole to the right of that approximately half an inch. So I could go into my incremental mode, and I could zero that out. So now I've zeroed out all three axes. And now I can simply, from that point, I can go over half an inch or whatever distance that I need to. So that's approximately half an inch right there. And now I can measure from that previous point, I can measure half an inch incrementally from that point. Now once I'm done with that, I can simply go back to absolute, and you can see that from my original zero, zero point that I'm exactly or approximately half, one and a half inches across from that. Now, the one-half button is the center find feature, and we already have a video on that. You can check that out on our web page. Go back, push that again, gets back to our normal display. Now, a ref button, I'm not going to push that right now because that actually takes us into the reference data memory. That's for if you have a power loss, you can get back your absolute zero, zero point. But we'll, again, we'll get back to that later. Our SDM key is our subdatum reference plane, and what we can do is we can put in subdatum points up to 199 subdatum points. So if we're doing uh, a repetitive project over and over, you simply can put points in, and you can once you put your zero zero or establish your workpiece zero, you can go to these separate points that you've established and drill the same points the same place over and over and over, and it's very good for repetitive work. So let's go ahead and get out of that. Let's, the inches millimeter key uh, simply toggles the display between inches and millimeters, and you can see that it just changes decimal points. So if you have a three decimals displayed, then you know that you're in millimeters. If you have four, you know that you're in inches. Now the next key over is for line angle. You can see it's displayed right here, and we'll get into that later. For drilling, basically, that's for if you have four holes at a 20-degree angle, three inches is the total length of it, then you can input that to the display, and it will tell you exactly where to drill the holes. Let's go ahead and get out of there. Go to incline machining. So if you're doing any sort of incline work on a piece, then that's what you'd use. Let's get out of there. Let's go to the bolt hole circle. 
and simply as it sounds, uh, if you have a three inch diameter circle or whatever have you, uh, with say five different points on it, it will tell you from your center point that you mark where exactly to go to to get those holes uh, correctly aligned around that center point. And then we have arc machining. Um, we also have another over here. Let's go ahead and come out of this. This is actually the large R is our simple arc and it's a little bit easier setup if you're going to do any sort of arc machining. So let's go ahead and come out of there. That pretty much concludes it for the display. You can see there's all of the function buttons. What's convenient about it is that none of them are buried in a menu system at all. They're all right on the front of it. So that makes it very convenient for the operator to get right down to work and not have to go through or enter into any sort of a menu system. Well, that concludes the segment on the ES10 3-axis display. I hope you enjoyed it, and now you know how to use it.